we're starting a new unit. Uh, functions is the title of it. And as we take a look at our vocabulary here for a couple minutes, uh, I know that the unit is called functions, but our first blank is not function. Any set of ordered pairs is called a relation. And an ordered pair, if you think about it, has two parts. It has the x value, which comes first in the ordered pair, and the y value that comes second in the ordered pair. The set of x coordinates in a relation, which sometimes is called the input, is called the domain. And the input what we put into the function is also called an independent variable. It's what we control. Once we determine that we're putting something in, we're going to use it. And that leads us to the y coordinate of the order pair. The set of y coordinates, sometimes it's called the output in a relation, it is called the range in our relation. And it's determined by whatever we put into it. Or in other words, we can say it depends on what we put into it. So this is the dependent function. Sorry, dependent variable. Yes, it's determined by whatever we put into the function. Um, and sorry, whatever we put into the relation, I seem to want to say function here, but I knew it was coming. A function. is a relation. So it's a set of order pairs in which each element of the domain, the x values, corresponds with exactly one element of the range. And that is a good math definition, which I think we can understand. But I think it's even better stated here if we say that every x value has exactly one y values or even so what we can say is that no x value repeats for something to be a function and in fact if you like to highlight then there might be something right here that I think is important enough to highlight which is that right there not a super fan of highlighting. I think that people over highlight. But that's the underlying idea behind function. The x values in a relation cannot repeat to be a function. So up to you. Well, another way that we can determine whether something is a function or not is to use the vertical line test. And what happens with the vertical line is, vertical line test is, if the vertical line, if any vertical line ever touches our graph more than once, then it will not be a function. So every vertical line can touch it once except for one which touches it <coughs> twice. And if that happens, then it is not a function. If we take a look at this one here, what we've got is we've got a vertical line that crosses there and a vertical line that crosses there. And that means that it is not a function. Uh, another way to think of it as well, if you look at the points on there, we're given Let's try that again. We're given the value, the order pair is x, y1 on the graph, and we're also given x, y2 on the graph. 
And once again, for something to be a function, the x's cannot repeat. This picture here is a relation. It is not a function. Because that vertical line touches the graph more than once. Oftentimes what we do So oftentimes when we're looking at different representations of a function uh, or a relation, and the question here is, is this relation a function? If we're given a list of ordered pairs in some sort, we look and we say, well, do any of the x's repeat? And if we're given a graph, then we try to do the vertical line test. So in this one, we're given a set of ordered pairs is this a function or is it not? Just nod yes or no. And it's not. Can anybody tell me why? Eh? And I'm going to say the three repeats, which is an x value. We cannot have an x value that repeats and it be still be a function. It's just a relation. Number two. What do we think? Nod yes or no? If you, yes or no? Michael? Why? The X doesn't repeat this time. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. But again, the question that was asked a little while ago is, can the y's repeat? Yes, the y's can repeat and still be a function, but not the x's. So this is, yes, it's a function. No x repeats. So not a complete sentence there, but that'll get the explanation across. Keep it simple. And again, the first two were a list of order pairs in order pair format and a table format. The next two are graphs. And oftentimes when we see a graph, what we do is we use the vertical line test. As we take a closer look at this, if we draw any vertical line on here, will any vertical line ever cross that more than once? And because the vertical line will not cross more than once, this is a function. And I'm going to say it passes the vertical line test. I do want to add a little something else on this one that you may or may not have forgotten from algebra one. But any line with a slant is function and it is because it passes the vertical line test a vertical line doesn't have a slant it doesn't pass the vertical line test to determine whether something's a function Speaking of parabolas, here is a picture of a parabola. Question is, is it a function? <laughs> Not yes or no. But it actually is 
Yes. Well, it's a yes. Well, it's a picture. We can draw a vertical line. And is there any vertical line that ever touches that graph more than once? And there isn't. Um, so yes, it is a function. And we pass the vertical line test. By the way, sometimes I abbreviate vertical line test. as V L D. If that helps with an abbreviation for your notes. Again, just to say it one more time. The X values cannot repeat for something to be a function. But using the vertical line test here, Again, as we take a look at this, on the first one, do we even need to draw any other vertical line in there? Probably not, because we've got the y-axis in there, and sure enough, this one hits twice. And for something to be a function, we cannot have a vertical line touch more than once. So this is not a function. What do you think on letter B? If we, you can nod yes or no. And it looks like it. My vertical lines aren't very straight here. But again, the point being, the X phase cannot repeat. The vertical lines can only touch once. And it never touches more than once. So this one is a function. What do we think on part C? And it is. Once again, any vertical line that we draw never touches the function more than once. And I should say never touches the relation more than once, which means that it's a function. Problem number six. One of the following graphs shows the relationship where y is a function of x and one does not. We want to draw the vertical line whose equation is x equals 3 on both graphs. So that's where we're going to start. Vertical line at x equals 3. So 1, 2, 3. I'm going to draw freehand because I know you're drawing freehand. There's a vertical line. 1, 2, 3. Vertical line. The vertical line x equals 3. That was part A. Now it says, give all output values for each graph at an input of 3. We put 3 into the function. What are we getting out of it? Well, in relationship A, when we put 3 in there, we get that value there, which I'm going to have to go back and count again, but I think it's 1, 2, 3, 4. 3 went in, 4 came out. The 3 went in, and 1, 2, 3, negative 4 also came out. When we look at relationship B, we drew the vertical line of x equals 3 here, and we get 1. We have 3, and we ended up with our output there of negative 2. We put 3 in, we get negative 2 out. The value on the graph. So, is A a function or B a function? Somebody says B. Why is B a function? And I think that your Algebra 1 teachers did pretty good with explaining this, at least it seems so far so good. 
what are the outputs for the input of x equals negative 2 when we're given an equation? But when we do these types of problems, what we're going to do is we're going to take the equation and we're going to put in, instead of writing x, we're going to put in the value of negative 2 and we're going to calculate that out. Well, negative 3 times negative 2 is 6 plus 5 is 11. That is our output. We put negative 2 in. There's our input. Put negative 2 in. We get 11 out. Now we have different equations here, so we're going to have different outputs, but this time it's y equals 1 minus 4 times negative 2 squared. Okay, let me refresh your memory on order of operations. Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. The first thing that we have to do in our order of operations is we have to deal with the exponents. So that means that this is going to be 1 minus 4 times negative 2 squared, which means negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. There's the exponent. Next, we multiply. y equals 1, 4 times 4 is 16. And lastly, get y equals negative 15. Once again, negative 2 was our input, and 15 was our output. And I don't know that you need to write that down, but if it's helpful, certainly. So lastly, we're going to look at a specific type of function. And... Uh, it's called a one-to-one -one function. And the first sentence here says a function f of x is called one-to-one -one if x sub 1 does not equal x sub 2 implies that f of x1 does not equal f of x2. Well, that's the math definition. And that's a hard definition to get. So oftentimes what happens when we're working through notes is you don't get the math definition you, you're getting a math teacher's other words for the definition. And that's one of the reasons why. That's hard to understand. But I think in our parentheses here, it, it's, a, I hope, a lot easier. In other words, different inputs give different outputs. And again, maybe that's good and maybe that's not. The last part here is, for something to be one-to-one, -one, the x values can't repeat, and the y values cannot repeat. No x values repeat, no y values repeat. So when we look at a couple of examples, first one's got tables. Here I would like you to take 10 seconds and look at it and see if you can determine which one of those is a one-to-one -one function. Don't shout it out. Just 10 seconds to determine which one is. And show me on the figures which one is. Nice. Three. Something to point out here. On number three. No x values repeat. One, two, three, four. No y values repeat. Two, four, eight, sixteen. You do have a four in the x and a four in the y. That's allowed. But the x's cannot repeat. The y's cannot repeat. A couple other things to point out. On our first table here, the fours repeat in the x's and the nines repeat. So not only is it not one to one, it's also not a function because the x's repeat. 
On our second table here, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, we're good there with the x's, so it is a function, but the y's. Repeat. If we're 1 to 1, x's can't repeat, y's can't repeat. On number 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, again, the negative 2's repeat, not a function. And then we've got 10's over here that also repeat, not a function. Sorry, not 1 to 1. For both those reasons, it's not a function, and so it's not one to one either. So why are the other tables not one to one? I don't know if this is my best, but I put something repeats. An x value repeats or a y value repeats, and for one to one, we can't have either one of them repeat. Number two, consider the following four graphs. Which so a relationship between the variables y and x? And in fact, let's go in terms of these words, which of these are functions? So take 10 seconds and determine which are functions. And in fact, down there in A, it says circle the two graphs above that are functions. What's the first one that is a function? What's the second one that is a function? One and four. How do we know they are functions? What are we using to determine that they're functions? Uh, they pass. Vertical line test. You might want to abbreviate vertical line test as VLT. So of those two graphs, which of them is one to one? And somebody says four, and I agree with that. How do you know? Aaron? Nothing repeats. I'm going to put no X repeats. Or no Y repeats, just to be specific here. But the last thing on the paper here gives us a little bit more help. And the last thing on the paper says that there's an easy way to tell if something is one to one. And it's the horizontal line test, which works remarkably similarly to the vertical line test. Vertical line test says that no x values, sorry, we cannot, a vertical line cannot touch the graph more than once. Now it's the same thing here. A horizontal line cannot touch the graph more than once. So when we go back and look at this problem here, once we've determined which ones are the functions, when we draw a horizontal line, the first one we draw, we touch twice, and that means that something repeats there. Over here, it does not matter what horizontal line we draw, we're never going to cross it more than once, so it passes the horizontal line test.